My dear viewer, if you like Tucker Carlson, then this video is for you. Please let me know what you think about my arguments in the comments. And if you don't like Tucker Carlson, then I still think you will find this video interesting. The ugly truth about Tucker Carlson is that he is being toxic for Americans and for the world because the United States plays a big role in global economy and stability. Immediately after he got fired, Russian propagandists offered him a job. Well, they've been already quoting Tucker Carlson pretty frequently, so it would be really easy for them, for Tucker to just join their team. But think about this for a second, who exactly offered him a job? He was offered a job by people who justify the invasion of another sovereign country. He was offered a job by people who justify bombing Ukrainian homes, Ukrainian power plants. He was offered a job by people who are spreading homophobia, sexism, racism, imperialism, xenophobia. And this is not the end of the list of what kind of people offered him the job. But if you think about it just for a second, just this fact alone that Russians have offered Tucker Carlson a job on their propagandistic TV shows, that already speaks volumes to me. Carlson and Russian propagandist views align. Besides this fact, I know very little about Tucker Carlson. I only know what he says in relation to my country, to Ukraine. And what he says about my country is unfortunately lies and manipulations. And I will present to you three lies out of many that Tucker Carlson is spreading about my country. The first lie being that Tucker Carlson pushes an agenda that Ukraine is not a democracy. Which to me, being a Ukrainian, sounds very weird. We had a presidential elections in 2019 and we had a parliament elections in 2020. We have on a five-year basis mayor elections. And those elections are deemed fair and transparent by all the international observers and organizations. And while it's true, Ukraine still has a lot of progress to make to be an open democracy like the Scandinavian countries are, for example. But so does United States too. On the index of democracy, Ukraine is listed 86 and United States as 30. While Ukraine has problems, it's clearly a manipulation and a lie to say that Ukraine is not a democracy. To add to that, Tucker Carlson also says that Zelensky is a dictator. How many dictators do you know that have been in power for three years? I would understand if Zelensky would be in power for 20 years, but again, knowing nothing about Ukraine other than this fact, it's pretty hard pressed to call Zelensky a dictator being in power for just three years. The second lie about Ukraine that he's spreading is when Tucker Carlson says that Zelensky has sent soldiers to churches and that we have arrested priests for no justifiable reasons. He has sent soldiers into churches. Zelensky's secret police have raided monasteries across Ukraine, even a convent full of nuns, and arrested dozens of priests for no justifiable reason whatsoever and in clear violation of the Ukrainian constitution, which no longer matters. Last week, he announced his plan to ban an entire religion, the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, and to seize its property, all for being insufficiently loyal to his regime. Well, Tucker Carlson is lying to you here and manipulating you. See, Ukraine has all the freedoms of religions uphold as per constitution. All the synagogues, mosques, Catholics, Orthodox, Protestants, the Mormon Church, you name it, they are all operating freely within Ukraine. What we banned was an organization that is calling itself Ukrainian Orthodox Church of Moscow Patriarchate, which is basically our enemies, Russia's influence within Ukraine. Tucker Carlson is misleading you and Tucker Carlson also doesn't tell you what those raids found. And they found lots of evidence linking them directly to Russia. See, Tucker Carlson will also not tell you that in Soviet Union, religion, churches, priests were actually KGB agents used to influence and manipulate public's opinion and to keep everyone in check. And you can see how easy it is to do. People share with priests their most private ideas, which later on priests working for KGB can report you on. And when Ukraine and ex-Soviet states have declassified their KGB archives, we found tons of evidence finding lots of priests being actually KGB agents. And which I'm sure is still true today with Russia. And I'll give you one more example linking Russian church operating in Ukraine directly to Kremlin. We were able to exchange one Russian priest to 28 Ukrainian prisoners of war. That's how valuable that KGB agent hiding behind the priesthood 
was to Moscow. My third evidence is that when Tucker Carlson says Ukraine is banning political parties, pushing the narrative that Ukraine is a single party. Zelensky has no interest in freedom and democracy. In fact, Zelensky is far closer to Lenin than to George Washington. He is a dictator. He is a dangerous authoritarian who has used $100 billion in U.S. tax dollars to erect a one-party police state in Ukraine. And that's not an overstatement. Over the past year, Zelensky has banned opposition parties. You should know about a political party in Ukraine called Opposition Platform for Life. Over the weekend, the president of Ukraine, Vladimir Zelensky, banned that party. Well, he is lying to you too. Ukraine indeed banned this party called Opposition Party for Life. And this party is basically a Russian hub within Ukraine. Some of its leaders have visited Russia a couple of years before the war. One of its leaders is actually a godfather to Putin's child. And of course, where do you think most of them went before even the war started? Exactly, most of them went to Russia. So in reality, Ukraine didn't ban parties. It banned a pro-Russian organization masking itself as a political party. And also, for some weird reason, Tucker Carlson completely fails to mention that Ukraine is fighting for its survival right now, just to be on the map. Russia tries to destroy us with everything it can, so Ukraine has to protect itself. When Japan bombed Pearl Harbor, the United States was very harsh on American citizens of Japanese origin. So, according to Tucker Carlson, while being invaded, should have Ukraine left Russian Orthodox Church and Russian party operate in Ukraine freely? No. Zelensky did the right thing, but Tucker Carlson for some reason is manipulating you to believe that Ukraine is not a democracy and I think he tries to prove to you that helping Ukraine is not worth it. Actually, he openly stated that he wants to side with Russia. Why do I why care, do care about what's going on in the conflict between Ukraine and Russia? Be because, and I'm serious. Be, like, why do I, I tell care? You why. And why shouldn't I root for Russia, be, because, which I am? Be, I don't really don't know why he, Tucker Carlson is being so anti-Ukrainian. You know, it's okay if you're anti-Ukrainian, if you want to side with Russia, but it's clearly not okay to lie, to lie about uh, my country especially while my country needs support and help, Tucker Carlson is being very toxic and destructive. And while I know little about Tucker Carlson, I think it is safe to extrapolate that if a person is okay to lie to you about one subject, this person will be completely okay to lie to you about other subjects as well. Tucker Carlson is very toxic. And to prove that once and for all, let me ask you this question. Does Tucker Carlson help unite the deeply polarized society of the United States? Or does Tucker Carlson help divide the United States even further? Which is, by the way, perfect for Russia. And the answer, I think, is obvious. Tucker Carlson is in any way not helping unite America. He's being toxic and destructive, and he's not even trying to be objective on the subject of Ukraine which lets me believe he's not even trying to be objective on many other subjects as well. And while being the most popular TV show in America, having 30 million views, he's not taking any responsibility for what he's saying. With greater power comes great responsibility. Tucker Carlson has great power of influence, but he's abusing it to push his own agenda. And why? I'm still, I'm still not sure. Why? Why does he want to side with Russia? Why is he so anti-Ukrainian? Why is he lying about my country? Maybe you, my viewer, know the answers to that. And then the other thing that shocked me about Tucker Carlson is when the Nord Stream pipes blew up, Tucker Carlson, without any evidence, blamed United States for basically committing an international terrorism act, which is insane if you think about it. Lastly, I would like to present to you a quote from professor of history from Yale University, Tim Snyder. In his article, We Should Say it, Russia is Fascist, he says the following. If Russia wins in Ukraine, it won't be just the destruction of the democracy by force, though that is bad enough. It will be a demoralization for democracies everywhere. Even before the war, Russia's friends, Marie Le Pen, Viktor Orban, Tucker Carlson, were the enemies of the democracy. And who would know about how democracies die more than a professor of history? I trust Timothy Snyder on this topic and I want to express my deep respect to 
this American who said this directly to Tucker Carlson's face. Okay, you are the worst human being known to me. I want you to, to this thing, to the United States, to everything else in this world.